hell did we do last week? Well, hey everybody, it's Gil here, not aboard the sailing vessel Dream Chaser. So last week we went ahead and took you along for some repair work we did on the small power boat. We had to do some work on the uh, the switches and the electrical contacts for the hydraulic uh, outdrive lift. And I'll tell you what, I, I figured I'd address this a little bit. So in this week's episode, we got a few things going on. But to quote one of the comments from last week's video, which had me laugh and feel a little bit disheartened at the same time, and it, it comment was just so much talking so little sailing exclamation point i was like oh man that's so true you know i start out every one of these videos with the uh, hyatt's gill aboard the sailing vessel dream chaser and as you can see we're clearly not aboard the sailing vessel dream chaser uh, there's been a lot of changes for us recently i think we've shared a lot of them with you but i thought i'd go ahead and do a couple of things in this week's episode one i think is applicable whether you're on a boat or a house quite frankly and that is um using a pressure cooker to make your own yogurt. And you can do it in a pressure cooker. Uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways. We'll show you how we do it in a pressure cooker. Um, it's something we did on the boat and we took this forward and we're doing it in the house here as well. The other thing I wanted to do is share a little bit of footage of um, kind of what's been happening at the boat, what's happening on board, and talk a little bit about our plans, what we're gonna ultimately start working on doing. Since we moved into the house, Deb's been making yogurt, and it is phenomenal. We eat yogurt in this house, so this is sort of live culture Greek yogurt. Um, this one's just plain, but I'll show you how she does it. Uh, after like, I don't know, four or five batches at this point, she has it down, and it's delicious. So today, we're gonna try something a little different. What's that you're pointing at? Yogurt. Do you like it? Yeah. Okay, guys. So I have been on the Instapot yogurt form for quite some time, and I have found this is, so far for me, the best brand of milk that works. 2% um, fat-free, all of those just to get too runny. So unfortunately for this, I find it best to use whole milk for it. So what I do is, basically it's very easy, you just pour it in a bowl. A half gallon? Yes, this is a, and then I have leftover starter from the last batch that I used. Uh, now this will be the third time I've used the starter. Each batch I pull some aside. Um, most people say after, you can do five to 10 batches on it and then it starts to break down and get a little runny. Some people say you just add a little bit more at the starter as you do it. So put two tablespoons of your starter yogurt and you can use I'm going to use a little more just since it's my third third go around with this. You can use um, the store-bought yogurt to start with, but you want one that's an active culture one. And then you just mix it in. Um, but you order, you put two tablespoons of your starter yogurt in it. I'm using from the previous batch. You can also use a store-bought brand, whichever is your favorite. Um, just make sure it's active culture. You just mix it in. To the, to the milk mixture. Um, now, I'm going, this is the first time I'm gonna do this. I'm actually gonna put it in the jars and then do it in the Instapot. You can also, if you're gonna put it in a bigger container, you can just do the whole thing in the Instapot. You put it on the yogurt, it cooks for eight hours, and then you can transfer it into whatever bottles or storage device that you want. It generally lasts, without anything added into it, about two to two and a half weeks in the refrigerator. If you add stuff to it, what I have found is most people say about a week shelf life. So a lot of people make it plain, add to it as you go during the day, in the morning, fruit, granola, whatever you want. Okay, since this is the first time I'm doing it in jars, I went ahead and took my mixture and put it in a pourable container so that I can put it in the individual jars. We're gonna do a few plain, and then we have some pureed strawberry and banana for my helper here because she likes strawberry and banana. So we'll do those after we get the plain ones. I'm gonna leave a little room to add stuff to the front of it. Why is that so smooth? Good. Okay, put a little less in this one. Go right to where the part starts to taper off. So, perfect. I think I put a little more in that one. We can fix that in a minute. That'll be my starter. <laughs> For the next batch, just pour a little bit 
um, lessening. You want to have room to add the fruit to granola that you want to add to it after the fact. There, that's good. Is that milk? I don't know what this is, kid. It's yogurt. Oh, it's not been cooked yet. Okay, cooked. Yeah, you wouldn't it melt it? Mm -mm. It thickens it up like a custard. That's kind of gross. Yeah, mm -hmm. you eat it every day. Well, I, I haven't had some... yogurt in the past few weeks. So this is the puree. It's just uh, some strawberries and a small banana with just a teaspoon or so of milk so that it would actually go ahead and... Mm -hmm. okay. Mix that up gently. Mm -hmm. Slowly mix it and then pour it into a jar. Rest in that one. Oh, maybe not. What about these guys? Those are plain. Yep, those are going to be plain. See how they're white? And then these are the ones that have the strawberry in them. Ooh, that one's going to be bad for me because I'm going to be eating that one. That one. Putting my jars into the Insta pots. I got the plain ones loaded in here, but unfortunately, my jars are just a little bit too tall to be able to double, double stack them like you can in some. So we're gonna do two batches. And then I hit the yogurt button, and on this it's gonna time down from eight hours down to zero. And it's going. But you wanna do it for eight hours? Yes. So since my glass jars were too tall, I'm gonna use both of my Instapods. So I've got a batch going in here and then I've got a batch started on my smaller one. And it is set and ready to go. So typically with the Instapod, everything is cooked at a high pressure, high temperature with the steam and that. But with the yogurt, it's cooked at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. So you just wanna make sure that your valve is on venti. You don't even have to put the lid on it. You can use the glass lid or the regular one. And um, once it goes, it just, it times up. I said incorrectly earlier, uh, most of it, the Instapot, it'll have like, you set the time and it counts down when you're doing the yogurt. So this has been cooking for two minutes. It will actually count up to eight. So that's it. So we'll see you in eight hours. So it's, yeah. So it's about eight hours later, but we had a little bit of a mishap today. The power went out in the middle of the day, so we had to sort of look at what time we started the yogurt, about how long it was till the uh, power went out, and then we had to restart the pressure cooker to make sure that we had the full eight hours. So it's been eight hours. Let me turn this around and go back to Deb. So as I mentioned, we lost power. It was out for about 40 minutes to an hour, somewhere in there. So what I did is I had to restart the yogurt thing. So I just stopped it because we're at the time for the eight hours where it normally would have stopped. So no idea how this batch is going to come out being stopped mid-session, but it looks pretty good. Um, so these are the strawberry banana ones. These are the plain ones. And because I couldn't double stack the jars, I went ahead and did a couple small ones so that I didn't have just two of these jars left over. So. There they are. Now you cool them in the, it recommends you cool them in the fridge overnight. So I'll put them in the fridge tonight and we will have yogurt tomorrow. You can eat them now, they're warm, but you can still eat it if you happen to like warm yogurt or if you're cooking with it, you want to try it. I want to try it. Okay. I would like. Don't, don't stop. 
I'm pretty. It smells okay. weird. Can I try but one of these? I must tell you, warm yogurt doesn't sound good to me at all. It's actually pretty good. Have you tried it before? Yeah. I've tried this is right. strawberry banana. I want to try this one. Just one. We're gonna try the strawberry one first. All the well, I Delicious, huh? Is it because it's warm or you don't like the flavor? Can I, I mean, it's because it's warm. Can I taste no, it? I, it's got a lot you can taste it, yeah. It definitely has a lot of banana flavor. A few more things. Yeah. Do you get it tightened up? Okay. Wow, like that. What you got? Hot chocolate? You think it's gonna be hot anymore? Feel it. <laughs> it, it. It feels cold. It's gonna be like chocolate milk now, huh? Well, that is hot. Is it good? Terrible. Is it really? Yeah. Does it taste good for you, McKinley? Yeah? I didn't mix, mix it up for Since we are living in a house right now and we want to take the girls and do stuff from time to time, we decided to do something that you do when you have a little bit of roots, and that was we went and got bicycles for everybody. Um, you know, we certainly want to continue to get our exercise, and the girls had bikes at the marina where we were in Louisiana. But frankly, they're still there in Louisiana, and we just haven't gotten back to get some of our stuff there and bring it here to this location. So uh, we went ahead and picked up a few bicycles. So I'll show you some footage here of uh, a bicycle we got for, um, for Chazzy. So we really kind of like those beach style cruising bicycles. You know, they're comfortable, they're easy to ride. They're, you know, it's, it's, you can ride for a long, long period of time. You're not hunched over and the seat doesn't have to be surgically removed from your Doompa after riding for a little while. So we went ahead and got those and we sent some pictures to Chastity. We were like, do you like this style bike? And she did. So we ordered her actually a Margaritaville uh, cruising bike for girls. So you can see here, we're putting that whole thing together. Um, hers actually came in before the other ones did. We also went ahead and got Deb a bicycle, and it was funny. We were we were considering bikes where we could uh, buy a little a little trailer for the for the the little one. Um, you know, as she continues to learn how to ride a bike, right? Hers has training wheels. When we were there in Louisiana, she hasn't tried to ride one in over a year. Uh, and it had training wheels at the time, but you can't very well go for a long bike ride or ride to the grocery store that way. So we needed to get something that she could hop on and ride. So what we found was this thing called the We Ride Co-Pilot. And it's, um, it kind of turns a regular bicycle into what looks like a tandem bicycle. She can pedal and contribute or she can just coast and relax. But instead of sitting in a little trailer, she actually is sitting in a, uh, you know, on a bicycle seat with handlebars back there. Um, and then we thought, okay, now we need to get another bike that does still pull the little kitty trailer. That way we can put groceries or whatever in it. Well, as we started looking at bikes to do this, Deb thought, you know, I wouldn't mind a three-wheel bike. Like, that seems like it'd be kind of cool, you know? It's, it's comfortable to ride. So we looked at a couple and we found a used one that was in almost perfect shape. So we went ahead and got her one of those. And the nice thing is that's got like a big basket kind of built right into it. So we can go down grocery shopping or to the farmer's market and... Uh, and she can, you know, load that thing up and be all set. Um, and then I, I looked all over online. I really wanted to get a, a decent bicycle, but I wanted one with gears. Um, if I'm going to be hauling a little trailer with the kiddo on it, I want one that, you know, I can kind of shift it into lower gear and get up over a bridge or a hill or something a little bit easier. So I started looking online for used ones because I was a little shocked. If you go get a decent bicycle, right, not just getting something at Wally World, but if you get a decent bicycle, um, they can be, you know, six, seven hundred bucks. I will actually, uh, I'll actually put some links down in the description below to a couple of, uh, a couple of bicycles we really liked. Um, one of them is called the Sun Drifter. They're a little bit more reasonable. You can get them one speed or geared. And I did end up finding one, and I and I got a great deal on it. Uh, it was already sort of decked out the way I would want it. And the only thing I need to do is probably move the little luggage rack from the back to the front, uh, and that way the trailer will fit on there even better with Swab. But we do a little ride in Swab, and I go down to the farmer's market this week, and I just had a good old time doing that. So, yeah, tell you what, um, let me show you that footage. Hi, guys. It's McKinley. I'm going to tell a story here today. And today, this story is going to be out about me on a bike and my grandpa on a bike. And the story is about a dragon today. 
too. So um, I'm going to read two long stories. Well, three more stories. That's going to be five stories that are long. So once upon a time, there once was a pure good dragon. And this dragon was so nice to the ground and not stomping. was super nice. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this week's video and learned a little bit about how to make yogurt either at home, on your boat, or in your RV. It's a great way to know you're not getting any additional additives or preservatives, and quite frankly, it tastes great. So down below in the um, description, I will put all the links to the items that you saw Deb use when she was making it in this video, and we hope to see you guys next week when I share a little bit about what's been going on on the boats, our plans, and then just open up uh, to some questions that maybe we can we can converse on in the conversation uh, and this, and comments next week about a life dream you have and whether or not you achieve it and ultimately how you handle whether you do or you don't or you fall short of it. So I look forward to having that discussion. See you guys next week. And please do us a favor. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it with somebody you think might uh, appreciate it. And do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.